Hi, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill, and uh, today we're going to do time, speed, and distance part two, right? So this over here is my email address where you can send me your valuable feedback. That is pushperfectscores89 at gmail.com. And if you think this video helped you, just make sure that you like us at facebook.com slash perfectscores. And to explore more about us, keep watching this page that is perfect-scores.com, right? So there's more to come here. So today we're going to do per time, speed, and distance part two. We already done part one wherein I have discussed about the variations in time, speed, and distance according to one another. So in the second part, we're going to discuss that is this part that is the relative speed that is the speed of objects with each another, right? So don't get too confused by this, by this, you know, with this big term as relative speed. It's a very simple concept, right? So let's go ahead and move forward and understand that. Now what exactly is relative speed? So as I said, uh, relative speed is the speed of bodies. So relative speed is the speed of bodies according to each another right so the speed of bodies according to each other right so that's what the meaning of relative speed is so let's suppose uh, there are two types of relative speeds which can happen the first type is when the bodies are traveling in the same direction so let's suppose this is uh, let's say this is car a right so I don't know how to draw a car right so let's suppose this is car a which is traveling at the speed of 10 kilometers per hour so this is car a and let's suppose this is over here as car b uh, which is actually traveling at 20 kilometers per hour right so the relative speed over here would be uh, what do you mean by relative speed speed is the actual distance that is covered between these two cars in one hour right so this car tower covers 20 kilometers per hour this car covers 10 kilometers per hour so the actual distance that will be covered between these two cars that would be 20 minus 10 that is 10 kilometers per hour why is that because this car is going to cover 20 kilometers and this a car is going to going to cover 10 kilometers and the distance between them is always going to remain 10 kilometers every hour so every hour 10 kilometers per hour is going to get added between these two cars so when the cars travel in the same direction or uh, whenever two objects travels in the same direction if the speed of one object is a and speed of another object is b so the distance that they're traveling so the overall relative speed is a minus b kilometers per hour so that's uh, what the speed is a minus b the speed get deducted right so let's see the another part of the story that is when they travel in opposite directions so what do you mean by opposite direction let's suppose this is car a all right and let's suppose this is car b and car a is traveling at 20 kilometers per hour and car a is traveling at 10 kilometers per hour now what is happening every hour every hour a is traveling 20 kilometers and B is traveling 10 kilometers that means every hour a total distance of 30 kilometer is being traveled right so this is what is happening every hour so when the when the objects are coming towards each other or when the objects are in opposite directions so that means that the speeds are going to get added right so that means this is what the relative speed is equal to when the objects are traveling in opposite direction right so suppose you 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 must know about this uh, you know in the very beginning of this video that's why I'm not wasting too much time on that so when the when the cars travel in the same direction the speeds get deducted so there is a subtraction involved and uh, when the cars travel in the opposite direction the speeds get deducted so so the speeds get added there is an additional wall right so I suppose you already know that but what is it there to GRE GMAT and CAD what is there to standardized testing right so let's go ahead and use that right so I'm gonna use I'm gonna pick up a very easy question and on that easy question I'm gonna apply some technique which I'll tell you in the just next slide so over here it says that car A on a straight road travels from point A towards point B at an average speed of 60 kilometers per hour. 
So there is, uh, let's say, a point A and there is, let's say, a point B and this is the distance. Car A travels from here at the speed of, so this is, let's say, the speed, at the speed of 60 kilometers per hour. And uh, it says that at the same time, car B in the opposite direction of car A starts from point B towards car A at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. So car B travels at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. And if they meet after 20 minutes, what is the distance traveled? What is the distance between point A and point B? So let's suppose they meet here, right? So let's suppose this is that point. So which means what? That means car A has traveled from here till here, and car B has traveled from here to here. That means in this particular, when they meet, the time is actually which is constant, right? So the same time they have traveled the distance. So time is something which is constant. At that particular time, a has traveled some distance and car B has traveled some distance but the total distance is actually equivalent to the distance between A and B right so that's what the case is so it says that they meet each other after 20 minutes so the time over here is actually 1 by 3 hours right so 20 minutes is 20 by 60 minutes 20 by 60 hours which is 1 by 3 hours again the time here is 1 by 3 hours and the distance traveled is equal to speed into time which is equal to 20 here and which is equal to 40 by 3 here so the total distance is equal to 20 plus 40 by 3 since there are no answer options so I'll suggest this as my answer so the only thing that I want to emphasize over here is that always find which thing is constant. That is something that will make sure that you get your answer right. Always find something that is constant. You know what, sometimes the distance traveled is same, sometimes the time taken is same, sometimes the speed is same. So you gotta always identify which thing is same and always work in columns in the same way which I have done. The distance is equal to speed into time and over here are going to be equal to your different cars or different persons or different people, whoever they are. So this actually keeps you organized, which is actually what I want. And you know what, uh, GMAT, GRE or CAT, take it any test. It is not going to test your, you know, too much. It's not going to test your concepts. It's not going to test, you know, what techniques you have. It's going to test how organized you are. This is what is majorly tested. So if you are organized in your scratch paper work, you are never going to go wrong. Believe me in that. What I have and what you have, it's it's just scratch paper work that we have. So you got to stay organized in that so that you don't make mistakes that is very very crucial I would actually give it five stars right so uh, always make sure that your scratch paper setup is actually organized so I will give it five stars to your scratch paper setup right so all right so let's move forward to a question okay now always find what is constant in the question this is very very crucial when it comes to relative speed always find what is constant and you'll be surprised many times that so easily you're able to get the answer right now let's see this question it says that candy started from home uh, on a trip averaging 30 miles per hour so this is candy here and I already know that the distance is equal to a uh, speed into time. This is something that I already know. It says that candy started from home averaging at 30 miles per hour. How fast must Julia drive to catch her up in three hours if she lives she leaves 30 minutes after candy? So what is the distance that candy is gonna travel in those 30 minutes? So the distance that she is going to travel will be equal to 15 miles, right? So now right over here, it's uh, right over here is Julia and uh, the distance between them is 15 miles and right over here it's Candy and they are both traveling in the same direction and uh, now what is the question saying? Uh, the, the speed of Julia is 30 miles per hour and let's suppose the, sp uh, sorry, the speed of Candy is 30 miles per hour. Let's suppose the speed of Julia is J miles per hour.
and the distance between them is 15 miles. So the relative speed is going to be equal to, so what is the relative speed here? It's going to be equal to, so since Julia has to catch up Candy, so Julia's speed has to be greater than Candy's speed, so that will be J minus 30, and the distance between them is actually equal to 15 miles. So the time taken from here is actually equal to distance by speed, which is 15 upon J minus 30, which is actually equal to 30 three hours right so not 30 minutes three hours which is actually equal to three hours right so this is what is given in the question so if I say 15 is equal to 3j minus 30 right so from here 3j actually becomes 45 and j actually becomes 15 so so this becomes 45 and uh, sorry this is 30 into sorry it's 3j minus 90 right so just a small calculation error right so uh, 3j minus 90 so this is going to be 90 plus 45 90 plus 15 which is going to be equal to 105 so j would be 105 divided by 3 so that would be equal to 3 and 1 and 5 that is 35 so 35 is my answer Right. So suppose you've understood this question, just a little calculation error at the end, uh, that the speed is 30 and in half an hour is going to travel 15 miles, so the distance between them is 15 miles. So Julia travels at the rate of J miles per hour and Candy travels at the rate of 30 miles per hour. So the relative speed is J minus 30 and the distance between them is 15 miles. So the time taken is going to be 15 divided by J minus 30, which is equal to 3 hours, which is given in the question. And from there, we calculate the speed of Julia, which comes down to be equal to 35 miles per hour. Right? So suppose everyone has understood the question. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next one. Now let's see this question. It says that Arun, Baron, and Kiramala start from the same place. So let's suppose uh, this over here is the place. Let me get my pen. So let's suppose this uh, over here is the place where they actually start from. So there is a, there is uh, Arun, there is Baron, and there is K. So they actually start from the same place in the same direction at the speed of. So this over here is your speed. That is going to be equal to 30 for A, 40 for B, and 60 for C. This, is, this over here is your speed. Now it says that Varun starts two hours after Arun. Right? So Varun over here, so Arun is the one which actually starts first. And after two hours, it's actually Barun starts. Now the question is saying if Barun, Kiramala, and uh, Barun and Kiramala overtake Arun at the same instant, how many hours after Arun did Kiramala start? Now understand, this over here is actually a twisted question. It's a previous CAD question also, so you know, supposed to be tough. Now this over here is a it's, it's a cricket question. Why is that? Because it's actually asking you to back solve. This is a very good contender to back solve. So what do we do when we back solve? Is actually we start with answer option C and we move up or down accordingly to the question. Right? So let's suppose Kiran Mala actually started four hours after Arun. Right? So if it started four hours after Arun, that means the distance between Kiran Mala and the distance between Arun when Kiran Mala started would be equal to the distance that Arun has traveled in four hours. So the distance that Arun has traveled in four hours is going to be equal to the speed of Arun into the time that would be equal to 120 miles. So for the so the time taken for Kiran Mala to catch Arun would be equal to the total distance between them divided by their relative speed. Now what is their relative speed? That is 60 minus 30 which is equivalent to 30 that is 4 hours. So the time taken for Kiran Mala to catch Arun would be 4 hours of alone that Arun traveled and four more hours that it took Kiramala to catch Arun. 
that would be 4 plus 4 which is 8 hours right now let's actually calculate how much time did it take for Barun to actually catch Arun now what was the distance between Barun and Arun when actually our Barun started so he actually started two hours later so in those two hours Arun would have traveled 30 into 2 which is 60 miles and when Barun started the relative speed is actually equal to this minus this which is actually equal to 10 since they're traveling in the same direction so it took 6 hours for Barun to catch Arun plus 2 more hours when actually Arun was traveling alone so it again took 8 hours for Barun to catch alone that means after 8 hours what was happening all three of them were actually at the same spot and this is what the question is asking you right that means answer option C is my answer right so I suppose everyone is understanding over here what I'm trying to do it's just I'm trying to back solve and if I would have gotten a discrepancy over here if this would have been 8 and this would have been 7 then I'll just move up and down accordingly right so I'm lucky over here that answer option C is my answer and you know what if you follow the right technique and if you follow the right method you're gonna seem that you are too lucky in the test why is that because these questions actually help you to solve the questions they they, they are not difficult at all so what you have to do is you just have to tr trust your instincts and trust that these questions are going to be easy for you right so you know you, whenever you back solve just start with answer option C it's suppose you you must have watched the video on back solving as well so that actually tells you how do you back solve so always start with answer option C and move and up and down accordingly right you can also do this question using algebra but I feel that you can actually do this question with back solving much easier right so I suppose everyone has understood this uh, all I have done is I've just assumed that uh, K started four hours later than A and I did just solved and I calculated the hours and they came to be equal which was given in the question right so let's go ahead and move to the next question now let's go ahead and do this question it says that there are two trains alpha and beta running in opposite direction on a circular track so let's suppose this is a, the, the circular track now it says that train alpha uh, travels at the rate of 4 miles per hour so this is your train alpha right and its speed it's 4 pi miles per hour and there is train beta but actually travels at the speed of 6 pi miles per hour if the radius of the track is 6 miles so the radius of the track is 6 miles uh, and uh, the trains both travel from point delta so let's suppose this is the point delta that is what they start from at the same time right and it's already given in the question that they actually travel in opposite direction so let's suppose alpha travels in this direction and beta travels in this direction now the question is saying that uh, how long in hours after the train departs they meet again at point delta so this is what the question is asking the question is asking when they are going to meet at point delta right so that's what the question is asking so they have to actually meet right here right so uh, what is the distance that to be traveled when they start from this point and they actually end at this point that would be the circumference of the circle right so what is the circumference of the circle that is 2 pi r that would be equal into 2 into pi into 6 which will be equal to 12 pi right so this over here is the circumference of the circle right so let's see the, the time taken for each of the trains to travel the whole circular distance so the distance over here is actually equal to 12 pi it's actually equal to 12 pi so the time taken over here would be distance by speed which will be 3 hours and uh, distance by speed which will actually be 2 hours so every three hours car A will be here and every two hours car sorry the train B will be here 
Now, when they are going to be here exactly at the same time is the LCM of 3 and 2. Why is that? Because for the first 3 hours, car 3 is going to be here, it's going to be at the 6th hour, it's going to be at the 9th hour. Similarly, for, alpha, uh, for the train beta, uh, after every 2 hours, it's going to be here, after every 4 hours, it's going to be here, and after every 6 hours is going to be here. So you can clearly see 6 is the something which is common to both of them. That means after every 6 hours or after 6 hours or after 12 hours or after 18 hours or 24 hours, they are going to meet at the same point that is from that they started. That means they are going to meet the first time in the first 6 hours. That means my answer is option A. Right? So I suppose everyone has understood the question. It's, it's, it's not a difficult question at all, but you know what? It's actually a tough question when it comes to GMAT. So uh, it actually starts, the cars actually starts from here, and they travel at this rate of 4 pi per hour and 6 pi uh, per hour. And uh, so the time taken for car, al so train alpha to cover the whole distance is 3 pi, and time taken for time beta to cover the whole distance is actually 2 pi. And uh, they, the time when they actually both meet right at this point is actually the LCM of these two points. That is equivalent to 6 hours, right? So suppose everyone has understood this question. Uh, so let's go and move to the next one. Now let's go and do this question. Now again, it's a previous CAT question. That means ought to be difficult. But let's see how difficult it is. Now, it's a previous CAT question. It says that Ram and Sham run a race between point A and point B that is 5 kilometers apart. So, this is point A and this is point B. So, the distance between these two points is 5 kilometers. And it says that uh, A travels at the speed of, so A travels at the speed of 5 kilometers per hour and uh, B travels at the speed of, uh, that is given to the question, that is 10 kilometers per hour, right? So, that's what the speed of B is. Now, the question is saying that uh, A starts at 9 a.m. and B starts at 9.45 a.m. Now, from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m., in these 45 minutes, in these 45 minutes, that is in this 3 fourth of an hour, right? So, that's what it is. How much of the distance has car A travel because car A is the one which actually started first. So the distance traveled would be the speed of car A that is 5 kilometers per hour into the time is that is 3 by 4 hours that is going to be equal to 15 by 4 which is equal to 3.75 kilometers. So this is the distance that car A has traveled that is 3.75 kilometers when actually car B started from here. So when car B started from here, that is the distance between them was 3.75 kilometers per hour. Now, but over here, car A is actually go from here till here and it's actually supposed to come back, right? So the question is asking, uh, at what time Ram and Sham meet for the first time? Now, the distance remaining over here is 1.25 kilometers. So what is the time taken for car A to travel this 1.25 kilometers? So the time taken for it to travel this 1.25 kilometers, that would be 1.25 divided by the speed of car A. So that would be equal to this divided by the speed that is 5. Right? But in that time, car B would also have traveled some distance. And what would be that distance? That would be speed into time. So distance is equal to speed into time. I suppose everyone knows that. So what is the speed of car B? So speed of car B is actually equal to 10. And the time taken for car B to travel anything, that would be the time taken, which is equivalent to for car A, to travel from here to here, which would actually be equal to 1.25 divided by 5. So this is nothing but the distance traveled by car B 
from here to any point here which is actually equivalent to this so car B is something somewhere here right and car A is exactly right here now what is their relative speed now car B is traveling this way and car A is traveling this way so their speed is nothing but 15 which will come in the denominator because time travel is distance upon speed right and what is the distance between them so that is what we have to calculate the distance between them so if we calculate this 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 decimal goes away and it gives us a hundred at the bottom and this is 25 times 4 and 25 times 5 and this and this goes away so this is 2 times 5 and 2 times 2 which is nothing but 2.5 kilometers that means car B is somewhere here that means the distance between them is actually 2.5 kilometers and the relative speed is 1.5 that means the time taken for them to meet would be 2.5 by 15 hours so if we calculate the actual time that is the time taken for car A to travel from here to here and then time taken for it to travel back and meet car B that would be actually equivalent to this so if I multiply if I just multiply this by 3 and if I multiply this by 3 so that would be 3.75 plus 2.5 divided by 15 so if I had to calculate 3.75 plus 2.5 so that would be 3.75 and 2.5 so that would be 5 and 2 and 3 plus 1 is 4 that is 6.25 so 6.25 divided by 15 right so that would be equal to 625 by 100 into 15 now this is something that I'm going to get in hours this is something which is in hours let me actually try to calculate that in minutes right because uh, this is something that is actually starting from 9 o'clock so I have to actually get that in minutes so let's actually multiply it by 60 so if I multiply it by 60 this goes by 15 times 4 that is 60 25 times 4 and 25 times uh, uh, what do you call it 25 and 4 and 4 go so that actually gives me 25 minutes so right from here and here right so what is the time for car A to reach from here to here is actually equal to 1 hour which is going to be equal to so sorry it's going to be equal to 9 hours sorry from here to here that would be 945 It's gonna take 25 more minutes for car B to meet car A after 9.45 so if I add 25 4 minutes after 9.45 so that is going to be equal to 10 o'clock and 10 minutes which is nothing but our answer option 2 right so suppose you've understood this question again it's a previous cat question so it's hard to be tough but you see the simplicity with which we are solving it uh, the distance between them is 5 kilometers and uh, the race and it's, it's just that you have to be very much aware when actually Ram comes back and when they meet so actually at 9.45 a.m. at 9.45 a.m. Uh, car B it's uh, sorry Ra Sham is something which actually starts right so I, I, I took it car B in throughout the question so Sham is something which who starts at 9.45 a.m. and Ram is someone who is right here and the distance between them is 3.75 kilometers now there are two parts to it one is when actually Ram travels from here to here and when actually he comes back right so there are two parts to it and all is just calculation and make sure you convert everything to the right units and then you'll get your answer right so this was about the video thank you very much for watching the video so in case you want to give me feedback on the video or anything else so make sure you give it on perfectscores89 at gmail.com don't forget to like us and support us at facebook.com slash perfectscores and if you wish to explore more about us on uh, perfect-scores.com so that'll be the place to be right so this is what the time speed distance second part video in which we discuss relative speed and in the first video we discuss about variations there's more to come we will we'll discuss about circular motion and everything 
right so this is about the video guys thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one